So we are going to do the integral of the natural log of the square root of 1 minus x plus the square root of 1 plus x dx. Now at first it might seem like a good idea to try trig sub. The problem is that our two square roots don't really agree with each other. Normally if you have the square root of 1 minus something, you would want to substitute sines or cosines. And if you have the square root of 1 plus something, you would want to substitute tangents. But we can't do both at the same time, so we're kind of stuck with trig sub. I think it would be better to start by doing integration by parts in order to get rid of this natural log. So let's see what happens if we try that out. Figure out what we want to differentiate and what we want to integrate. Well, we want to differentiate our integrand right here so that we can get rid of that natural log. So we'll differentiate the natural log of the square root of 1 minus x plus the square root of 1 plus x. Now, if we want to take the derivative of this, first we'll do the derivative of the outside here, which will be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x plus the square root of 1 plus x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside here. And that's going to be, for this square root first here, we get 1 over 2 times the square root of 1 minus x. But then by the chain rule again, we have this 1 minus x, the derivative is negative 1. And then for the second one, we get 1 over 2 square root 1 plus x. We're going to integrate 1 because that's all we have left in our integral. And that result will give us x over here when we integrate it. So let's see what happens when we do this integration by parts here. We're going to get that this integral equals, first we do x times our original over here, x times the natural log of square root of 1 minus x plus square root of 1 plus x. And then we're going to get minus this, so minus the integral of. We're going to have an x out in the front times all of this stuff that we just differentiated over here. But before we plug that into our integral, let's see if we can simplify this down to make it easier to deal with. Notice we have two things multiplied together, so let's consider each part first. So we have 1 over the square root of 1 minus x plus the square root of 1 plus x. Now if we want to fix this, we can multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate of what we have in the denominator right here. So the square root of 1 minus x minus the square root of 1 plus x. And then if we multiply that on the top as well, it's like nothing happened. And now, if we look at the bottom here, we're going to get the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then minus the square root of 1 plus x squared. We have a 1 and a 1 that are going to cancel out. And then we have negative x minus x will become negative 2x. That's going to be our denominator. So the final result of this whole square root thing over here is going to be the square root of 1 minus x minus the square root of 1 plus x over negative 2x. Now let's see what happens if we take this result from the first part here and multiply it by our second factor. So we multiply what we got here by negative 1 over square root 1 minus x plus 1 over square root 1 plus x. And then I'm going to take the 1 half that's on the denominator of both of these right out to the front just like that. Now what we are going to get here, first we're going to have 1 half times another 1 half and then times a negative. So negative 1 fourth. And then we're going to have to multiply these with our nice little foil. So first square root 1 minus x times negative 1 over square root 1 minus x is negative 1. Then we do the same thing for these two terms. That's going to be another minus 1. And then if we multiply these two together, we're going to get plus the square root of 1 minus x over the square root of 1 plus x. And then lastly, we get these two multiplied together. We have a negative and a negative becomes another positive, the square root of 1 plus x over the square root of 1 minus x. So that is the result from multiplying these two together. I also forgot this x here goes out in the front. And let's see if we can simplify these even a little bit further. So we have negative 1 over 4x. And then we have negative 2 out in the front. And then what we can do on each of these is multiply by the conjugate of the denominator in each case once again. So for this first square root, we multiply by the square root of 1 minus x on the top and bottom. And then for the second one, so we multiply by the square root of 1 plus x. So what happens is, let's look at 
just this first part here. Square root of 1 minus x times the square root of 1 minus x on the top just becomes 1 minus x. And then we get 1 minus x times 1 plus x is going to be 1 minus x squared. Then we add this on the top is going to be 1 plus x over. And the, the denominator is, once again, 1 minus x squared. So these two have the same denominator. If we look at their numerators, these x's cancel out. So what we're going to be left with is negative 1 over 4x times negative 2 plus 2 over the square root 1 minus x squared. If we distribute the negative in here, we're going to get 1 over. And then notice we have a 4 in the denominator, and then these two both have 2s. So we'll take that out. We get 1 over 2x times 1 minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we have simplified this gigantic, ugly expression right here down into this nice, simple form. And now we're going to plug this into our integral. So we have x times 1 over 2x times 1 minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And now look what happens here. We have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. Those will cancel again. So we're going to be left with a very simple result. x times the natural log of the square root 1 minus x plus square root 1 plus x. And then, in fact, let's just do this in our head. So first of all, we have minus 1 half the integral of 1 dx is just going to be x. So we get x over 2. And then we have minus another minus becomes a plus. Then we have 1 half the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. That is a standard result, the inverse sine of x. And in fact, this is our final result. So we did integration by parts just to get rid of that natural log. And all it took after that was a very nice amount of algebra to simplify it down just like this.